Uh, yeah, Josh Keeley, the director uh, here at Trident Search. Uh, I lead on the cyber threat intelligence team, uh, ex-military myself, um, and we set up Trident back in 2020, so just before the uh, the pandemic. So today, um, what I'd like to do is kind of give um, a rough kind of uh, guide uh, of the different routes um, and career pathways into the CTI world. So just to kind of start right at the beginning, uh, let's look at the different types of employers. So we have three kind of main common employers. Number one being vendors. So CTI vendors, your sort of software um, as a service, subscription-led platforms that customers subscribe to. Then you have consultancies, uh, which are predominantly kind of strategic threat assessments. Um, you have things like M&A assessments. You have threat-led pen testing, things like uh, CBEST, Tiber, ICAST. And then finally, we have what we call the end users. End users are typically FTSE 250s, uh, organizations that are large enough to have um, an in-house CTI team, which is quite can be seen as quite a luxury. So they're kind of three types of employers. We, let's talk now at the kind of, or look at the different levels um, of, uh, less career, I suppose, within CTI. So you start kind of uh, at entry level, we'd call sort of CTI researchers. Um, you then kind of go into the uh, analysis team or analyst, as an analyst. Um, you then move to more consultant, Sort of level roles which would be if you think about client facing stuff um client facing work uh, and then moving up into leadership so leadership could be like heads of threat intelligence director of threat intelligence um that can either be leading by example or leading uh, in terms of headcount and, and teams or both so just before we go into the actual different types of uh pathway just just want to reiterate here this is this is just a guide um there are lots of different variables and factors that depend on your entry into the industry um, and that could be uh, as one example, you could be a sergeant major um, in the military that wouldn't necessarily be able to come in at analyst level because one, um, compensation doesn't sort of fit lifestyle. And two, you might have some great leadership skills that just because you're not going to be as technical as an analyst, you could be um, you could walk into a, a leadership role that's not non-technical, for example. Typically, uh, here at Trident, we see kind of two different sort of routes into CTI. We'll talk, we'll talk first about the technical route. And then we'll sort of move on to the someone that's come from a non-technical background. So first of all, technical um, or someone that's come from a technical career previously, let's talk about like an IT professional, for example. Um, how do you bridge that gap and make the, uh, I suppose, a jump into a, a career into CTI? First of all, you should already come with the kind of foundational level of technology uh, or technological understanding. So what you need to be able to demonstrate and uh, I suppose upskill within would be things like cyber threats, APT groups, looking at kind of the CTI frameworks that the that analysts and consultants and managers use um, to build things like reports and analyze. And then moving on to things like tools. So not necessarily just theoretical knowledge uh, by doing certifications, but actually getting hands on to some of the tools that are out there, which many of them are free to use. Um, once you kind of built on that uh, it's kind of, or you've kind of immersed yourself in a cyber uh, understanding and uh, things like threat, uh, like cyber threats. You could then um, go one step up, which could be looking at certifying uh, in the CTI space. And depending on, again, it depends on what level you come in at. Um, but if you look at things like Crest, for example, there's three different levels of certification. You have your practitioner, you have your registered, and you have your uh, CC Tim, which is your manager level. So again, that's just going to demonstrate to an employer um, your I suppose proactiveness and the fact that you have bridged that gap and you've got a basic competency level, depending of course on what certificate you go for. Let's now move on to the kind of non-technical, um, I suppose career background. So how do you bridge that gap? How do you make entry into the CTI world? And again, it doesn't matter uh, what level you come in at. You can certainly, with no experience at all, going at higher than a researcher. It just depends on what career pathway you've come from. So, for example, if you are a, um, you might come from a customer service background or a consulting background, but no CTI, you can certainly come in at consultant level as long as you've added the other kind of elements to your um, your toolkit or your arsenal. So, how do you make that um, that move into CTI with no technical experience? Obviously, you have to start right at the bare basics in terms of technology. Things like uh, there are, there's a certification body called CompTIA where you have different levels again of um, certification, starting with A plus. Then you go to Network Plus, Security Plus. And they kind of three um, common uh, certifications that, again, demonstrate that you have upskilled, you've studied, and you've been able to or demonstrate a level of competency from a technology point of view. And then kind of, so that's your foundation built there. And then you want to sort of, um, I suppose, um, build on that 
again, with things like a CTI uh, specific qualification, looking at Crest again, you could also look at other governing bodies like EC Council or SANS, um, depending on your motivations and, and I suppose your budget. Yeah, that's kind of like, uh, if you're non-technical, uh, do your technical um, certifications first, demonstrate that, and then build on your actual CTI specific. Also, while doing your things like cyber threat, um, uh, kind of uh, knowledge building, APT groups, frameworks, toolings, the same as if you're from a technical background. So let's look at some uh, benefits that different, I suppose, career paths can have when you are moving into the CTI uh, industry. So uh, some examples, you're an IT professional, you're an infrastructure engineer for the last five years, you have a skill set that's in high demand in the CTI industry. When we speak to hiring managers, frequently uh, a big skills gap in a team will be the technological understanding things like Active Directory, cloud infrastructure, uh, whether it's AWS, Azure, or GCP, things like uh, basic networking, understanding what an IP address is, what a subnet mask is. Um, that technology understanding is a massive benefit and a big value add. Uh, if you can then build on that and um, I suppose upskill yourself in the CTI landscape um, and so against cyber threats, et cetera. So that's um, massive uh, value add if you're coming from the IT background. Moving on to another kind of common um, industry uh, well, background would be something like a journalist or a reporter. Uh, kind of flip it on its head from if you compare against IT, uh, you don't have, well, you tend to not have much technical experience, but you've got some great report writing skills. You have great, probably geopolitical understanding as well. Um, so all you've got to do is then marry that up with your IT understanding. And again, that can make a, a quite a good holistic CTI professional. Um, moving into the obvious one, which is um, the veteran or law enforcement depending on what career you've had within the, in the service. Um, for, well, of course, depending on what um, benefit you can bring to the industry, but let's say in, someone from the Inc Corps is quite an obvious um, choice. You've got great human intelligence, um, open source intelligence, and you'll understand things like the frameworks, the life cycle. Just now, again, you've got to apply more cybersecurity knowledge to that. And you, again, you're a ready-made CTI professional. If you are someone who's got no experience in uh, maybe from a, I don't know, a different regiment within the uh, military, then you, again, you've got to start building your technical layers on top of that, your, your CTI knowledge. Um, but again, you bring so many um, benefits and resources to the industry, things like soft skills and things like professionalism, uh, your condition to arduous working environments. Uh, because you do, uh, you will find yourself up late nights writing reports, doing research, um, and, and early mornings to hit deadlines because clients expect reports, um, especially at the, at the end of the of the month, for example. So again, uh, more sort of value added to the industry there, and a great benefit. Um, so, yeah, that are kind of uh, the common kind of pathways that we're seeing. Um, and as as we see the demand continue to grow within CTI, uh, we can't keep looking at one single talent pool like the veteran uh, community, for example, um, to hit this skills gap or meet the skills gap demand. So I'm um, going to, yeah, I think we're going to see more and more frequently um, different types of uh, careers or backgrounds from people moving into the CTI uh, industry, which I think is only a good thing when you look at things like um, diversity and the different sort of trail of thoughts. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I think it would build a, a better all round industry. Finally, then just a few sort of tips just to summarize. Um, my number one thing, and, and this doesn't matter what background you have, uh, networking. So make sure you have a, something basic like a LinkedIn profile. You highlight on that profile what you are looking for, what are you doing at the moment, what are you upskilling in. Start connecting with people that are relevant in the industry. Start connecting with people like recruiters, for example, uh, and get yourself out there, your name known, um, and make sure you ask for things like recommendation, referrals, get yourself in closed networking groups, and just really put yourself out there. Long are the days gone where you can just apply for a job and hopefully sit back and wait for a response. Sorry, but the chances are you probably won't get one um, because there's always someone more qualified, right? So you have to be more proactive. Secondly, upskilling. You have to continuously upskill no matter where you're at. Uh, and you can ask a CTI manager who will continuously upskill to stay ahead of the curve. Um, or you can ask someone who's just joined as a researcher. They'll always be upskilling and things like the latest cyber threats, what's happening in terms of um, the latest breaches, um, what geopolitical events happening in the Far East that might affect um, the United States, for example. And then um, finally, um, something that uh, even we do as a, as a recruitment team, um, there are lots of vendors and consultancies who push out free newsletters, free blogs, podcasts, uh, videos, 
uh, things like Crest, uh, follow the Crest YouTube channel, um, shameless plug, but little things like that, it's, it's all free, right? So just absorb it and immerse yourself in the industry. Uh, don't sign up to the newsletter and then every, every week it comes in, just delete it. Take five minutes to read through it. Um, and they're the kind of questions and topics and discussion that you're going to have in interviews. If I'm a hiring manager, I'm going to ask you, what do you know about the latest uh, emerging threats that are happening in a particular industry or technology? What's happening with solar wind at the moment? What's happening with uh, how's that linked to FireEye? And just be able to talk about it, even at a high level, will demonstrate to your potential employer that you're interested, um, you're passionate about it. And that's the type of person, given a bit of guidance and training, they're going to bring on board. And it's going to be, again, a lot of value add. So yeah, that are kind of my tips, I suppose, um, to help you get into the industry. And, uh, and yeah, so um, feel free to reach out to me or any of my team 